Hey guys, my name is Mannequin, and uh, I'm going to try for it. Okay, so um, I'm going to see if I could do a headphone mix and master on this. Actually, uh, I listened through this, and it doesn't seem like there's going to be all that much I'm going to need a mix. I just actually need to go in and do an EQ, because I think I was able to get most of it dialed in on my headphones in the previous episodes, so uh, I could actually go in and just try to master this uh, instead of just uh, instead of going through and actually mixing everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the gain plugin, add an EQ, and close that, and then we're going to add our limiter number six. And this is going to be a very drafty master. I did rename the track up here, or not rename, but I saved a copy as draft master so I could actually um, do tweaks in this one and then go back to this one or the previous one, kind of knowing where I'm going from. So um, hopefully I could get this submitted on time. I really want to try to get this something in, and uh, we'll see how this works. So um, uh, first thing I want to do with limiter number six is turn this in uh, to master one. Uh, it's just kind of what I start my masters off of. And then uh, we're going to go here. And uh, there's one thing that I think I need to definitely turn down, and that's the reverse kick. Um, but other than that, we should be able to just kind of go through and start focusing on the EQ for the master. Because instead of mixing everything, you guys could probably tell if you've been listening on studio monitors or uh, good headphones that the mix is not actually perfect. Um, and the biggest reason is because the sound signature is not correct. And um, I could check it with some reference tracks, but I'm probably not going to do that uh, just because I'm so short on time and I just want to try to get this submitted. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I'm, so I'm just going to go through and try to EQ this. I already, I already tried EQing it once, so I kind of got an idea of where I need to EQ. And then, um, and then we're just going to do some light limit, uh, limiting and compression on it just because this is a trance track, so I don't want to kill all the dynamics. Excuse you. And... Um, and at the same time, I don't want to, uh, I, well, I don't need to push it very hard to begin with. Um, because if this were an electro house track, I'd want to do like push as hard as I can and kind of distort the, distort the high ends with some, uh, clipping and stuff like that. Just kind of let it, uh, sound a lot louder, but since it's a trash trance track, I can kind of let it flow a bit more. So, uh, we're going to listen here and see if I could dial in the EQ. I'm not going to start here at the intro. Cause that's kind of useless uh, because that's not what the rest of the track sounds like. So I'm going to start here and just kind of play it back and uh, we'll listen to this and kind of base our, uh, base our master off of this. Unfortunately, the automation didn't go. There we go. That's better. So this is a lot of build up there. And cutting that alone actually makes a big difference. And I just realized I need to switch this over to a linear phase EQ uh, since we're mastering here. So try goes again. Actually, scratch that. We're going to switch this over to the channel EQ because the channel EQ actually sounds better for this cut. It actually sounds a lot more natural when I use the channel EQ in this case. The, the linear phase EQ sounds more like I'm slicing a, sl a part out of the sound instead of actually EQing it. Um, so that's why I'm going to choose that there. Okay, now for the low end. We're going to try to balance in a little bit more low end, so it's kind of, uh, it, it does have a lot of low end, so it's pretty solid in that regard, but what I want to do is I want to boost and cut at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the sweet spot and boost that. Be with me. So tell me your I wanna feel your okay, so actually, I changed my mind. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the cut. Uh, so I'm going to go EQ, linear phase EQ, add a, so this is my second EQ on here, so I could do a what's called a surgical cut, and the reason it's called that is because it's a very uh, thin uh, kind of cut, it's, it's designed to be thin, it's not going to be actually uh, that thin in practice here, but its purpose is to be kind of thin, just to kind of slice that apart. So we're going to look for... It's probably that. Don't be shy, baby. If you wanna be with me. 
Nope. It's that. That's what I was looking for. So you'll notice that reduces the bass, um, and this one is actually kind of like, like I said, it's supposed to sound like a surgical cut, not like a, um, not like a, just a regular nice EQ boost cut that we did kind of here, where it's smoother. This one's supposed to kind of like slice out a chunk. So now what I could do is I could take a boost here. Then we can cut the lows. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Uh, I just want to check the reverse kick, make sure it's fine. Actually, we don't have to worry about that one all that much. It sounds okay. Now we'll go back into linear phase EQ, and now that we've kind of gotten the lows and the low mids, uh, we can go up to towards the high end and really look for this. This is the part where I really wish I could use my monitors, but I can't. Um, so I'm going to have to try to listen for this and see if I can get this to sound quite uh, right and how I want it to be. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. So now with that boost there, we get it. We get a lot of high end that sounds nice. And um, now we're starting to run the risk of causing some thinness in our track. So we're gonna go back to the channel EQ, which we kind of notice is not as um, sharp and crispy. And we're, then we're gonna go around here and do a boost. So what I'm looking to do here is I'm looking to balance out the sound of our track um, while not making it sound uh, sound abnormal. So what I do, what I what I want to do is I want to kind of bring up this spot here until it really fits in and kind of sounds. So our track sounds almost flat, as they call it. And um, in EQ sense, you don't want it to sound like it's got a lot of highs and lows. You want it to sound balanced throughout the entire frequency spectrum. Um, you don't want it to sound like a flat track. That's a whole different thing. You want you want the EQ to be kind of flat sounding. So, and I don't want it to reach too wide because then it sounds like it's being boosted across a really wide spectrum, which it technically is. And so, I'm gonna I thinned it out to around here to where I could get a uh, get the sort of um, curve here that adds to the mids, but it doesn't kind of sound like you could actually hear the fact that I'm shaping it with the EQ. It's more of just it's sounding better. the very high 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 part here so I could uh, 
kind of just get rid of this unwanted stuff. Same thing that we do with the low end, but we kind of do it with the high end. And then I'm gonna take this boost and just boost it a tiny, tiny bit just to give it a little bit more high end. Don't be shy, baby. Now let's listen to the drop. Okay, now all that's left is to listen to the, the break here. Okay, here we go. I really like how that one plucks shines now. Now that now you can tell that really sounds bad. The effects stand out a lot more now that I've EQ'd it correctly too. Okay, 
I think this is sounding good. So now all that's left, now that we've EQ'd it, we've really dialed in this EQ. You know, you could kind of sell, tell when I was comparing it there, turning it on and off. That it did a huge, just like it really fixed everything that was like, the, the basses were sounding kind of like, they were like drowning before, but now it really fixed it. Um, now, just want to point one thing out since I'm here. Um, this is not necessarily going to happen with your tracks. If you if your stuff is sounding like it's drowned out and you go in thinking, okay, I kind of saw what he, uh, what he did and the uh, the master really cleared it up and and it just everything was okay. Um, don't necessarily think that this is the this is a case where um, I'm mastering one of my tracks and I kind of know what I tend to do. So when I originally mixed this track, I was kind of mixing it. Uh, despite the fact that I was mixing it to a wrong sound signature, I was mixing it uh, correctly in that wrong sound signature. So now that I have these two EQs on top that just kind of do some slight um, cuts and boosts, you'll notice this is a lot a lot more subtle than the. Uh, than the EQ things that I did on the individual tracks. Uh, but now that I've done these, I can actually, um, uh, it, it fixes the sound signature that I was mixing to and it kind of gets it into the right spot, I think. I have my headphones on, can't tell for sure. Although I do know it sounds a lot better when I'm switching between these. Okay, now for the, the limiting and we're just gonna, we're gonna compress this. We're gonna pull this up till the compressor uh, starts to compress things because you'll notice it's actually still not compressing quite a lot because I had headroom without the, or with the gain plugin on, which means that I have a lot of room to boost and I could actually potentially put a gain plugin in between just to kind of for, because I can, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just pull it up on the compressor here and then I'll kind of let the compressor do some compressing here. And um, so anyway, let's go in and just gonna start this from the beginning here and kind of talk what I'm doing, so let it play back. Okay. So I wanna turn on four times sampling. So I get high quality, uh, I don't get any artifacts or anything like that, I just get high quality compression. That's doing no work. Note that clicking on these zooms them in. So what I'm looking for with the attack here is the kick. If you listen when I dial it down and back, um, the kick opens up and you'll, if you kind of listen to the high end, you could really start to hear it. So that's kind of the sweet spot. So I'm turning down the ratio. I brought it all the way up so I can kind of hear what it sounds like over compressed and then I brought it down to kind of dial it in. And what I'm looking for here is, does it sound squashed? I want this to be as open as possible because this is a trance track. Um, and then I'm not gonna mess around with the dry mix or the type of compressor here. Uh, I'm just gonna go move on to the peak limiter. Uh, probably not gonna do too much of that, just might do a little bit of a boost or change the threshold. But uh, what I'm gonna focus on more is the clipper and the protection, and I might turn off the high frequency limiter. Don't be shy, baby. If you wanna be with me, so I'm turning that off. I'm turning this off because uh, you could hear the click goes through fine when I have it on, but then there's kind of like a shh at the end of the click of the kick and um, that doesn't go through anymore if I leave it on. So I'm turning it off so you kind of hear all of that. And then we're gonna just leave it to the clipper to keep the sound and yet kind of bring up the loudness.
sounding okay.
that's a wrap, folks. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about uh, finally is you could tell I was switching between this, clicking it a lot. Um, usually I use Digital Clip, but this time I'm actually going to use um, ISP Precise. And the reason I'm doing that is because Digital Clip has um, a almost warmer, more clippy sound, where this one sounds kind of more like a smoother blended sound. Um, so usually I'd use this in Electro House, but since we're doing Trance, I'm going to actually go for this one. Uh, just because it kind of gives a better tone to the overall high end. Uh, and then you could also tell that when I brought it up to this, in the end, I ended up taking off this cut because uh, I don't need to worry about this because this is kind of already handled by the way um, where our limiters are working. Our limiters aren't clipping as much, so we don't need to worry about the, the very high end being clipped and uh, brought out a lot. So I can actually let that flow and instead let this limiter um, cause this is a limiter, this is clipping. Um, I could let the limiter do the job and kind of reduce that for us. So I think we're good. Um, yeah, wow. I was actually not expecting the, uh, master to be this fast. Oh, actually one final thing. Um, it's at negative 0.3, which means I could just leave it at that and then normalize it. But instead I'm just going to pull it up to zero and then we'll kind of leave it as is and just kind of let it, uh, sit there and not normalize it when I'm done. was doing there was adjusting the gain um, just to make sure that since we since we pulled it up by 0 0.3 I needed to adjust the gain just a tiny bit on the uh, on this here just to kind of you know dial in a little bit more just get a little bit more loudness out of it so no, that's it for this one I really like this series felt a lot shorter than the previous one partially because uh, I did I recorded the episodes like all in one weekend basically not, not all of them, but like half of them, uh, just because I was trying to get this done in time for the contest. Um, if I'm lucky here, it's 9.30 my time. I don't know if the contest is still be open, but normally I don't let things run this late. But um, due to some reasons, I could not get any studio time in uh, this, like really this weekend. Uh, so I was kind of limited to, instead of having f four days to work on it, I was limited to two days and that kind of messed up everything and I really didn't get enough time to work on this. But in the end, I like how it sounds and um, I honestly can't think of anything else I would do potentially with this project. And listening to this after we've slapped on the two EQs and the limiter, I don't really see much of a need to go in and tweak up stuff all that much. Now, if I had my monitors running, I would be able to hear a lot more things and I'd be able to hear it from a different perspective. And I'd change a lot more things, but uh, given, first of all, the style of the series, the fact that I kind of have to use a microphone right now, and if I turn on my speakers while I have this microphone on, I'll get a crazy feedback loop, kind of means that um, I need to, the only way I could use my speakers is in between episodes when I check, and um, and then even still, I wouldn't be able to like check it before and then go in and do the tweaks from there because I wouldn't be able to remember it exactly. Uh, it just have to be, you know... <laughs> Relatively speaking, the, what I did with my headphones when I, I kind of listened on my speakers just a tiny bit, and uh, I did that practice uh, EQ for the master, and then um, and then I came in here and I did the same thing, except I kind of knew what to expect in my headphones because I was switching between my headphones and my speakers. So when I went in to record here, I kind of had an idea. The only things that I knew was this and that. That was all that I was sure about. Everything else here was kind of listening in and tweaking things as I was going along. 
So anyway, um, I really, really, really enjoyed this series a lot more than last series. I do want to apologize though, because I know the last couple of episodes must have felt really rushed and I didn't explain things as well. I know last episode and this episode, I tried to slow down a bit more and talk a lot about more what I was doing, but I do want to sincerely apologize for the fact that I did kind of get caught up in producing instead of explaining things. And really the point of this series is not to show you me producing. It's to for me to kind of walk you through what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, what's going on in my head and everything in between. So anyway, I believe, yep, I saved this project. So it sounds like we're done. We ended up with 83 tracks minus one, two, three, four, five, six, minus six. So that means we're at about 77 tracks. Uh, of audio plus the couple of buses that we have running down here at the end um, which kind of you know ends there's no numbers on these but um, we have eh, just a couple other ones so in the end uh, this didn't end up being a massive project as an over like a hundred tracks but it did, uh, did end up being reasonable size what I usually do so I honestly think that like uh, unlike the last series this track is a lot more up to the standard of what I do there were some things that I did here that I wouldn't usually do in a track, but that's kind of new news because each track I try to do some new things. So I kind of, you know, because otherwise it's just my production routine gets stale and I don't really develop as a producer myself. So I kind of try new things each time. And uh, with every track that I do, there's something weird in there that I've, I've never done before. And it was just trying to, you know, kind of experimenting, trying out new things. So anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I've got to hopefully get this submitted. If it's still open, please pray that it's open. I hope it's open um, because otherwise that means rushing was all for naught and I should have just spent this time, you know, going slow and working it through for you guys and kind of, you know, focusing more on that. But hopefully I can get this in. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series and uh, I don't plan on ending the series really. Um, I may switch between remixing from scratch and track from scratch, which would be creating an original track from scratch. We'll see how that works out. I also kind of want to switch the series over to a live stream that I record um, so that you guys can kind of be there while I'm doing it and then I record and swap over and then just upload that to YouTube. Um, but you, we'll see how that works out. I don't want to end this series. I just kind of want to see if I can, you know, kind of develop it and improve it. So it helps you guys out in as many ways possible. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.